Oh, there's a countdown. Okay, good. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Jessica Blaylock. Uh, I met her at a Miami Marlins game for Fox, Jessica, correct? Yes, Fox Sports Florida. Okay. And uh, I was visiting my grandmother, actually. I was down she and she's the kind of person that wouldn't want to entertain people. So I asked her, can I go to a baseball game? She goes, yeah, great, because I'm going to church that day. So you go to the baseball game. And it would have been a Rays game, but the Red Sox weren't there. And I had already been to the Rays stadium. So I decided to go up Tamiami to the Miami, what's it called? The, what's the stadium called? Marlins Miami? Park. Marlins Park, right, exactly. And um, I went by myself. I had a great seat, front row seat, and I was there early. Anybody who knows me knows I'm always early. And I see a woman walking by. She's got someone behind her, clipboard, and, and she's she's walking like she owns the place. So I'm like, I said to the people, I already meet the I already met the people next to me. I said, who is this? And she goes, oh, that's Jessica Blaylock. I go, who, 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 who I, I'm, she, they knew her from Boston, so they knew I didn't know who you were. But I said, is she like part of the, is she like our sideline reporter? And she's like, oh, yeah, she does the Panthers. She does the Red Sox. And by the, I mean, uh, not the Red Sox, the Marlins. And by the time you got, but that conversation happened, you had already gotten to, you were literally five feet in front of me. And she, she said, you should go, you should go talk to her, get, get a, get a picture or something. I'm like, seriously? She goes, yeah. I was like, all right. So I got in line. It was like four little kids and me. <laughs> But I was like, all right, that's fine. It was it was actually Giancarlo Stanton bobblehead day. And this is the program from that game, if you remember. It was a no-hitter game. But anyways, so I talked to you. I said, hey, Jessica, how you doing? I'm, I'm from Boston. I think you knew I was from Boston from the way I said, hey, Jessica, with my horrific <laughs> Boston accent. And and you said to me, you were so nice. So that's, that's what really I really appreciated because you talked to me for at least two minutes. You didn't have to do that about your – what you were doing and how you liked Boston and you had a great time every time you come up here. And it was just, you were just so nice and engaging. You weren't, um, stim you know, you weren't, you were working. You didn't have to be doing that. So I really appreciated that. And when I, I was doing, I started this podcast in June and I was trying to think of people I could get and I follow you on Instagram and I was like, let me see if I'll just reach out. Why not? What, what's the worst you can do is say no or ignore it. And you were like, yeah, sure, no problem. Let's do it. I'm like, great. So <laughs> that was a couple of months ago because I, I didn't expect you to say yes. So I just figured maybe you'll see it in a month or two. You answered me like the next day. So that, that was, I, I was surprised by that. So I do thank you. But now you did mention to me that you love coming up to Boston and you have a great time doing that. What do you love about Boston? We can Maybe we can compare and contrast what I love about Florida and what you love about Boston. Well, first off, thank you for the kind words. And uh, I'm always... So flattered anytime a fan comes up to me and wants to talk baseball or wants to take a picture or wants to chat for a few minutes. Um, because I always appreciate, you know, people going out of their way to say something nice. So I want to always acknowledge that and give time back. Um, so yeah, absolutely. You know, always great having conversations with people at the ballpark uh, to get to the question about Boston. Why do I love Boston so much? Well, Boston actually runs in my blood. My grandmother was born and raised in Beverly. Um, and my dad was born and spent the first couple of years of his life um, in Beverly, Massachusetts. So there are two houses in Beverly that my great grandfather built from the ground up that are still standing um, I've seen the house in Beverly that my dad was born in. I've seen the elementary school that my grandmother went to. So even though I wasn't born in Boston, even though I wasn't raised in Boston, uh, Boston just feels like home when I'm there. Um, but I, I just, I love that. Should be, that else. should be a song, Jessica. That should, <laughs> that should be a song. Boston, you're my home. I think, I don't know. I could anyway, be wrong. That should, how, that should be a um, Let's just go ahead and introduce Chester because he's probably yes, going to be sneaking it. his way into this. Uh, the other one, Lemon, <laughs> the other 12 I have is over in her dog bed. So maybe she'll come over for a few minutes. Who knows? But uh, I love Chester's little cameo in the background. But um, yes. Yeah. Boston, just I love everything about it. You know, three of my favorite things in life are sports, history, and beer. And when you think Boston, you think sports <laughs> history and great beer so uh to me it's 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 just it's a city that i love it's a city that's near and dear to my heart because of family connections and um new england you know it's a place that i try to visit at least once a year whether it's boston whether it's maine new hampshire 
uh, whatever it may be. I just, I love being in New England. You had mentioned to me earlier, I got to talk to you a minute before we started that the Bruins actually got you into hockey because you do the Panthers as well. Do you work? Let's, let's cover this first. You're, you work for Fox. You would cover the Panthers and the Marlins, yes. which is amazing. If you ask me, Oh yeah. Uh, by the way, this is the hat. This is the hat I bought at Marlins park at the pro nice. shop. I actually, this, this was, you know, there was a no hitter. We were involved with the no hitter. Edson Velasquez. Volquez, did I say that yes, right? Edson Edson Volquez. Edson Volquez. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, and I did, I did two bad things <laughs> for a no hitter. Oh, no. I won. I, I walked in. I actually have a picture with me with Billy the Marlin. I'm wearing a white hat, but I wanted this hat. They didn't have it anywhere, so I couldn't go without a hat. So I got a, a white one, all bummed out about it because it wasn't my favorite. But then I went to the pro shop, which I love, and I saw this hat. This is the All Star. Oh, nice! Actual All Star. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, ho- you hosted the All Star game, uh, and, and so I bought this. I went to the car and I put the white one in there. So I, I switched hats, which is a no no. And then I don't remember the play, but there was all, there's always a play in a no hitter what people talk about like, Oh, good. That like an ex- outstanding play that preserves the no hitter. And there was one in that game. It wasn't incredibly remarkable, but it was one of those where I turned around to the guy behind me and I said, if he finishes this no hitter, this is the play they're going to talk about. And he said to me, shut up, you jinx. That's what he said to me. <laughs> so, something like that, because you don't, you thought I jinxed it. So there is no jinx because he finished with the no hitter, but yes, this is the actual hat. And if you remember the picture I sent you with, of you and me, of you and me, this is the shirt I wore too. So I little, little Miami love, love for you. I love you know all I mean? the connections. Well, if you remember that day, um, we'll yeah. get back to the Bruins in a second and the connection with hockey. But if you remember that day, Edson Volquez, I believe it was early in the ball game, uh, took a comebacker uh, and ran it over to first base and actually stumbled. I believe he stumbled over the base and they had to come out and take a look at his ankle and make sure that he was okay. So early in that game, you were wondering for a second if he was even going to be able to make it three, four innings. And then he goes on to throw the no hitter, which it was just crazy the the way that entire game played out. And then I think the last, the last play of the game was, it was a strikeout, but JT Romuto maybe didn't catch the ball. Maybe it was a ball that got past him so Edinson Bulk has a celebrating on the mound because he 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 knows you know he's thrown the no hitter but JT still got to throw the ball down to first base to make sure that they get the out so um there were just so many things about that day but uh but it was it was awesome to see you know to see a no hitter and and for you to be at that game I mean what are the odds the game at Marlins Park and you get to see a no hitter that day so I mean that's a great memory for you too yeah, it was crazy. And you are, you are right. You just answered a question because I actually videotaped each because it was two strikes on the batter. Mm-hmm. And so I, he fouled off a couple. There was one wild, not wild pitch, but it was in the dirt. I was taping each pitch. And on the last pitch, the, fi- the final strikeout, everyone goes nuts. But I do see the catcher running towards, it looks like he's running towards first base. Right. And I don't know why he was doing that. So he was trying to throw the ball to first. I didn't know that. I was wondering why is he sprinting to first base? It's a no hitter. Go, go celebrate. Right. So thank you for that. I didn't know that. I know the other stuff, but I couldn't, I was too busy. You know, it was, it was nuts. Yeah. I've never been to a, a no hitter. And that's the one game I went to all year. And I chose it over at Tampa because the Sox weren't there. And it was the best decision I made. Yeah. It was great. That was a good call. That and I got to call. meet you and, and hang out with you for a couple of minutes. And, and here we are now. And now so we're doing great. the podcast. Uh, exactly. That's right. That's Always right. And, and that's awesome. It does. It, it took it three years. It was 2017 when the game was, but um, so how did the Bruins get you into hockey? Yeah. So I um, was super lucky to grow up in a, a sports household. You know, my mom and dad both love sports. Um, my dad is a huge, huge Red Sox fan. Uh, my uncle, huge Red Sox fan, loves the Patriots. Um, but, you know, being from North Florida, it's just not a hockey, right? Like it's just not a hockey part of the country. Nobody really knows hockey. The only people that probably really know hockey in Jacksonville, Florida are people who are there from maybe Boston or New York and kind of already had a love of hockey established. So I literally growing up, even though I I grew up in a household that loved sports, just 
never talked about hockey, never watched hockey, never even thought about giving hockey a chance because I didn't see snow, first of all, until I was 17 years old. I mean, I'm going to the beach every day. I'm going to the beach in January. That's what you do in Florida. So I remember highlights on Sports Center. This must have been 2013 when Boston came back in that playoff series against the Maple Leaves and gave was apparently an epic game. You know, I think the Bruins overcame a three goal deficit in the third period to win that game. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, man, I just missed a really great game. You know, I don't care what sport it was. I don't care what event it was. I missed out on watching an unbelievable game. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this hockey thing a chance. So I, I obviously with the connections to Boston, I was like, you know, I'll just, I'll follow the Bruins. I'll follow what they do in the playoffs. And the next series, I believe they played the Rangers and game one went to overtime and Brad Marchand scored the winner in overtime. And it was like one of the most exciting things i had ever watched. And from that second on, I was hooked. Brad Marchand was my favorite player. I think that was the year that Tori Krug had just been called up because somebody was injured. Um, that team had Tyler Sagan. That team had, uh, I mean, obviously Patrice Bergeron and Chara and all those guys. Um, and I ended up watching the Bruins for the rest of the playoffs. Uh, they lost to Chicago that year in the finals. But I don't talk about that. I know. Well, and especially now that Joel Quenville's the head coach of the Florida Panthers. But I mean, I just remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. I'm hooked. So the next year I ordered NHL center ice and I watched almost every Bruins regular season game on Nesson. And if you had asked me, you know, 10 years ago, would I ever cover hockey? Would I ever like hockey? Would I ever become, you know, such a huge fan of the sport? I would have said, no, I don't even, I don't, I don't even know what a power play is. Like, I don't even, I, don't, I know nothing. And now it has honestly become one of my favorite sports I've ever, ever covered. And, but I have, I have the Bruins to initially thank for, why I ended up starting to watch hockey. No, oh, that's a great story. No, you, you, does that coincide with when did you? What I'm, I guess what I'm asking is, you do the Marlins as well. Did you do them first? Were you with them first, and then you parlayed it into the Panthers? Yes, that's so what you mean I by your connections, right? I originally moved down to South Florida to cover baseball. So when I had the opportunity to move down here, it was just to cover baseball. Um, and then a couple weeks before the baseball season ended, <clears throat> excuse me, my producer uh, approached me about would I want to cover hockey? Would I have any interest in covering hockey? And I was like, absolutely, I would love to. So I started out covering, um, you know, every Saturday home game. So it was just a handful of games throughout the season. Um, and I just I fell in love with it. And now, you know, last year I worked, I think, 64, 65 games. Um, wow. And it's just my love for the sport has just grown and grown every season. Hockey players are awesome to work with. Um, you know, I we had Yarmir Yager here for the first couple seasons that I was covering the sport. We had Ichiro with the Marlins. So to not only be lucky enough and blessed enough to cover two sports that I love and that I've had so much fun, but to be able to cover two legends, you know, in the same, right. same town, it just, you know, it's, it's been, it's been such an awesome ride. Now, I do have to ask you, I, I, like I said before, I follow you on Instagram and you do a, a hockey dance, a victory <laughs> dance. What are the odds of you doing that right now? Okay, so we'll put you on I'll the plot. explain. I'll give you a little <laughs> little taste right. of the of, of the hockey dance, but I'll explain the background of how this started. So, you know, I am a reporter who gets to cover 
one team versus a reporter who travels to a different game every week or every night or whatever it is. So I get to know the players that I cover really well. I mean, I'm in my sixth season of hockey and I just finished my sixth season of baseball. So especially baseball, when it's 162 games in a regular season, normally, you know, I know this past year was obviously different, but when you're spending as much time with these players as you are, and I travel with the team for baseball, uh, I travel for hockey on occasion. So you, you get to know these players really, really well. And not just as, you know, a second baseman or a center or a goaltender or a pitcher, you, you just, you really get to know them as people. And um, so you, you form these great, relationships with them and obviously when they succeed you're thrilled when they lose a game you're bummed out and so for hockey we would walk to the dressing room after games to get post-game interviews and things like that and if we won I would usually walk up and I'd do these little happy shoulders like this and if we lost I would walk you know so dejected and because now we have to ask guys about a loss and you know, they already feel bad and you know, it just, it's not fun. Um, so I guess the happy shoulders, whenever we'd win kind of turned into a little bit of a dance and people <laughs> kind of gravitated towards it and liked it and thought it was funny and thought it was fun. And so it went from just doing happy shoulders after a dance to trying to come up with these victory dances and I, I finally have retired. I have bequeathed my dancing queen crown to an adorable little girl <laughs> who's a huge Panthers fan and started doing, uh, you know, victory dance videos of her own. Um, because I'll be honest, I'm not a great dancer. And if you've seen any of my victory <laughs> dance videos, then you know I that. <laughs> and it was really becoming difficult to try and come up with either a different dance move or something funny. And um, so I figured it would be best to just pass on, pass on the crown uh, to a four-year-old who, or five or however old she is. And uh, she's got the energy. She's probably got the better dance moves. I'm going to let her take it over. They were, it was funny though. It was, it was, you could tell well, you're I'm having fun. You, enjoyed them. you know, sports are supposed yeah, to was... be fun. Our jobs are supposed right. to be fun. And if you're not having a good time, then you're not doing it right. Um, so I, I like <laughs> that people got a kick out of them, but uh, I'm not, I will by no means uh, reached by dancing for the stars to come on anytime soon. It would be a well, disaster. You can, the, you can do the mask dancer. They're on Fox, right? You have an in. Yeah, you could, you could but able, you, no one will know. No one will know. I've already embarrassed all I know, myself. You already did it. You already did it. So I will. Uh, <laughs> I will probably kindly pass if they want me to be on any sort of dancing show. Well, you you did mention about how the usually you do the full season of hockey and that's it until recently. So how was that? Yeah, um, just, Panthers. you know, the shortened season for baseball and then obviously uh, the condensed season for hockey. We're only playing 56 games this season. Um, you know, obviously it's it's a bummer when, especially for baseball, when you look at normally 162 games and you're only playing 60 um, like we did this past season. But I, I'm a very glass half full, glass 99% full kind of person. And I'm, I always try and look for what I can be grateful for. And I'm really just grateful that we're playing hockey, right? That we had a chance to play baseball, that we got through the season, that, um, you know, we made it to the playoffs, that that we got to, uh, to, to see a World Series this year when I think for a, a lot of time a lot of people were wondering if we were even going to play any games so you know and I feel the same way about hockey I I'm just glad that it's back and I'm so glad and so thankful that I get to be one of the people that goes and gets to see games in person you know because there's a lot of people who wish they could go to a hockey game this year and they're not going to have the opportunity to do that so as you know, as much as you wish we could have played a full baseball schedule and as much as you wish we could play a full hockey schedule, 
I'm very grateful for what we have, and I'm going to appreciate every game that I get to work. That's the right attitude for it. Very good. Very good attitude. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I was just thinking of, of – I was thinking of I – ha- I, you probably haven't seen listened to my other podcast, but I just had someone, one, someone I went to school with, she lives in Florida, and we were talking about Publix. And I was wondering I if, if you, I love you okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I want to show you something. I had a, a podcast with my mother. It was called Christmas at mom's or with mom, whatever I call it. And uh, Sharon, who was the, the woman after her, we were talking about Publix. I got this in the mail from my mother. They're, yes. they're socks. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Publix is amazing. Yeah, I have Publix. I have Publix socks. Uh, pub sub, right? Is that, and that what's called? Oh pub yeah. Sub? The chicken tender sub is <laughs> legendary down here. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> Publix is, uh, is, is beloved by a lot of people in Florida, uh, especially their subs. So that's why you usually yeah. have to, uh, now order ahead because if you get there, it's <laughs> going to have a crazy line of everyone who wants a public <laughs> sub. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully either when you were down here or the next time you come down here, you can go get a, a sub from Publix. Oh, I've had them. I've, I've, oh, you I have? have. Okay, My grandmother good. lived. Good. Yeah, the one in Fort Myers Beach is right down the street from her. Excellent. So I would do that. Um, you, I, I do, like I said, we mentioned Instagram before, but you're, you are a runner. Have you, I think you did a marathon, did you not? I did not. That is still on uh, the checklist of goals. I've done a couple of half marathons. I think I've done three or four point. half marathons. Um, and yeah, I had to take a temporary break from running. Uh, I had some, some lower back kind of sidelined me for a little bit, but doing better now. So the goal I've, I've been able to get on the treadmill over the past couple of weeks and, um, slowly, but surely trying to work my way back up to distance running. Uh, that's still probably going to take some time, but, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I got into running, I swam competitively growing up. So I was a swimmer for about 10 years. I started swimming when I was eight. I was a butterflyer, which is why I've still got the, uh, the shoulders (laughs) because I was a hardcore butterflyer for years. Um, and when I got to college, uh, and, and stopped really swimming competitively, I was like, well, I got to do something. And so I started running, um, and just kind of fell in love with it. It was great, great stress reliever. And uh, my little sister also loved to run. So we did a run club together when I was still living in Jacksonville, made a ton of great friends. You you do your three mile run, everyone would get a ticket for a free beer. And then we'd all just hang out afterwards or play trivia or watch a, you know, watch a sporting event, whatever was on TV. So it kind of became uh, not just a great way to exercise and blow off some steam, but it also just became a really fun social thing and something that I could share with my sister. So I miss running and I will, now that I'm slowly getting back into it, I'll, I'll let you know if I ever get up to running a marathon. All I ever think when I'm done running a half marathon is if I was running the full, I'd have to do this all over again. And I don't know if I'm going to do that. (laughs) Is that the goal though? Is that your goal in the marathon? Is what? Is that your goal still the marathon or are you? Yeah, it, it always has been. Um, I would definitely need to hardcore train for it though. I mean, that's something that you really need to acclimate your body to 26 miles, 26.2 miles. I mean, that is no joke. I always wanted to run the Disney marathon because I thought it would be fun to kind of run through uh, the parks. And then at the end of the day, when you're done running, you get a free ticket to go to the, you know, go to Disney. So if you're going to run 26 miles, you should at least be able to reward yourself on the back end with a right. ride on Space Mountain. At the very least. At the very, yeah, least. At the very least, yeah. Now, you mentioned your sister. Uh, you, you're you close with her. Uh, you have nieces. Do you have a niece and nephew? I, I I I'm not stalking you. It's on your Instagram, and I don't remember. It, so that should <laughs> show you that I'm not keeping track. But I know yeah, you, you I spend a lot of time with the nephew. kids. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my, I have an older sister and I have a younger sister. My older sister, uh, that's how I have the nephew. And my younger sister, that's how I have the niece. And the niece is about 
seven and a half months old, almost eight months old. So that's been a lot of fun. That's been a lot of fun to just uh, to get to spend time with her during the holidays and watch her grow. And, you know, I was just FaceTiming um, with my mom earlier today because she was watching her. So I got to to talk to her through the the phone screen. And if at least if I can't be there in person, you know, FaceTime has become a great way to um, at least feel like you're there. Sure, sure. Um, we went to, you, where did you go to college? I, I don't know if you said it or not. I am a Gator. I went to the University of Florida in Gainesville. So uh, big, big, big Gator fan. Um, and I was there for the first national championship that the Gator basketball team wow. won in, I guess it would have been the 04, 05 season. And then my little sister was a freshman there the year that they won a national championship in college football and another championship in basketball. So talk about getting spoiled your freshman year. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> um, I, you mentioned it before, the, the hockey players, you get to know them and everything. I don't know exactly, but wasn't I always see what you one time you had a helmet on, you're getting toweled or pie faced or whatever. Is that <laughs> How does that work? I mean, well, the, I, some people took offense to that. They, you actually had to defend it, though. I thought I love Didn't it people because it? players yeah. wouldn't do that if they weren't comfortable with you. And to me, it shows that they are comfortable with me and that they feel like you're a part of it too. So you know, I when Christian Yelich was still playing for the Marlins, um, you know, they always used to do the shaving cream pie in the face. And I remember I'm in mid interview with him and he takes a huge glob of the shaving cream and puts it right in my face on camera. And then, um, you know, for hockey, I finished interviewing Jonathan Huberto and I'm throwing it back to our guys. And he takes the towel that he's been wiping his face with and throws it on top of my head. Um, you know, I, I, the, the time you saw probably when I was wearing the helmet was, I had to go in between the benches because I was going to interview Joel Quenville in the second period of our game. And I can't interview him on the bench. Like I can't get out there unless I'm there the whole period. Right. So I, it, you know, it, it was my first time being in between the benches. So <laughs> I wasn't nervous about being down there because of being close to action or players or anything like that. I just didn't really want to take a puck in the face. So as a joke, really more as a joke, I wore a helmet in there the first time that I ever went in between uh, the benches. And, um, you know, some of our players thought it was hilarious, like Keith Yandel in particular, who's got a great personality. He was like pointing at me and he's like, what are you doing? And I think Sidney Crosby, I, we must have been playing the Penguins that night. And I think Sidney Crosby saw me wearing the helmet and like skated up to Yandel and was like, what's going on over there? Like, so, I mean, it's just, you know, it's great moments like that, that you just think how cool that I get to be a part of that, you know, like how cool that those are the kind of moments that my job creates. But uh, I will say after the first time of being in between the benches, I'm like, okay, I'm good. I can do this now without the helmet. So I, I left the helmet behind the next time that I had to go in between the benches. But to your credit though, you, you, you do post it so everybody can see it. I think that's fantastic. Because <laughs> well, I mean, it's, 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 I think that's another thing, you know, people want to see that you have a sense of humor. People, I think, appreciate when you can laugh at yourself. Um, and I always, I always want to project in a broadcast how much fun I'm having and how much I love my job and how much I enjoy getting to do what I get to do. So I think, Stuff like that just helps show people how I feel, you know, at the end of the day about what I get to do. I agree hundred percent. Now, um, hockey just started. So you're, you're doing that now. Yes. Where does, I know this is going to come off February 1st. So you, you're off tonight. Wh when do you, what's, what's your schedule like as far as. So my like the next, next week or so. Yeah, my next couple of games are coming up next week. Um, and I believe we play the Red Wings. So I think that I will be in the studio 
for two road games against the Red Wings next, maybe Thursday and Friday or Friday and Saturday. Uh, I don't know. When, I literally live by this planner right here. I'm old school. I like to write things down. I write everything down in here and I literally open it each day and I'm like, okay, where do I need to be? What am I doing today? Because without this, I would be completely lost. It's the one gift that I always ask for every Christmas. I always want my new planner for the upcoming year. Um, so, because, you know, especially in baseball, days just run together. The schedule just runs together. You know, you maybe leaving for a 10 day road trip, 10 games in 10 days. And by the end of it, you can't even remember what city you started in. Um, so I, I really, I just take a look day by day and I'm like, okay, this is who I need to be preparing for. This is, this is what's going on. But I think, I think next weekend is the next time that I work. So until then I'll be, I'll just be watching a ton of hockey games uh, leading up to that point. Now, when you said you're in the studio a certain day for the two row games, does that mean you're you're on the ice? Not not the actual ice, but you're you're down below. You're what's the difference? What are your your responsibilities? So, so we're not traveling this year for hockey. Uh, we're doing every game from South Florida, whether the team is at home or on the road. So when the when the Panthers are at home, we do our broadcast from the BB and T Center. When they are on the road, uh, we do the game from our Fox Sports studio, which is in downtown Fort Lauderdale. So our play-by-play -play and color analyst will call the games from the studio here, and I will host the intermissions and post-game show from the studio here. So, uh, so it's, it's kind of like baseball, you know, every game we did this year, we did from Marlins park, whether the team was at home or on the road. And, um, you know, it's just all again, just part of safety and, uh, kind of the new way that we're doing things right now until we, until we get back to, uh, what things looked like before the old normal. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I just, I, I have to ask this question because I, I'm sure I would get joke ragged on if I didn't. Uh, being a Red Sox fan, Sox Yankees, you have Donnie Baseball as your Marlins manager. What is what's your favorite story about about Don Mattingly? Well, and not just Don Mattingly, but Derek Jeter. We don't, we don't talk uh, about Derek Jeter. No, I'm kidding. I, he's he's <laughs> so great. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. There's uh, now Jorge Posadas in the organization as well, so there's multiple Yankee connections. Um, but Man, working with Don Mattingly is just awesome. I mean, you talk about a great guy, um, a, a guy that genuinely loves teaching and helping players develop and has just been, you know, really, really classy. Even when the Marlins have had some really tough seasons He's the kind of guy that he's never going to embarrass you. You know, if you ask a bad question, he's always going to try and give you something. And he is just, you know, he's so appreciative of your efforts. Um, at the end of every season, if we finish the year on the road, he walks around the team plane and he shakes everyone's hand and thanks them for their contributions that season. Um, so I really it's not so much that I have like stories about Donnie that jump out in particular. It's more just um, who he is as, as a whole, just as a person, you know, all, all the baseball accomplishments, what a great player he was aside, just the person that he is and just what a pleasure it's been working with him these past several years. Um, I do love, you know, the one thing that I, I really did miss this season that we've been able to do in past seasons because we always talked to him in the dugout in person. And we weren't obviously able to do that this past year, sitting and listening to him break down the game, sitting to him, you know, or, or sitting and, and listening to him talk about the way the game used to be played and um, you know, how, how he never was buddy, buddy with anyone who was, who was on base. 
uh, you know, while he was at first base, never really talked to anyone, you know, never, you know, now you see a lot of, a lot of guys who are on opposing teams, uh, they're friends, you know, they hang out during the off season. They, they chat while, while they're on first base. And that just wasn't the case with Donnie and, and he always gets a kick out of it. And I think it's so funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's, he is just, he's awesome. He's awesome. And I'm, I'm so grateful that he is the manager of the Marlins. And I, I was so happy for him this past season uh, just to see the success that the team had for them to make it to the playoffs, uh, especially after everything they had to go through early in the season um, with, you know, the number of players who tested positive for COVID and, and the number of roster changes that they had to make because of it. And for the team to just battle the way that they did and, of course, play hard for Donnie. Um, it was just awesome to see what, what the Marlins were able to accomplish this season. Yeah, it was remarkable. It, uh, Derek Jeter, anything? Oh, again, awesome. <laughs> no story? Derek is, <laughs> Derek is the kind of guy who must have met a million people the first day that we had our introductory press conference with him. And I will never forget the next time that I saw him he said, hey, Jessica, how are you? Good to see you. And I was so flattered and so impressed that, you know, of all the people that were probably like, hey, I'm so-and-so, hey, I'm so-and-so, that he, he took the time to remember my name and he took the time to make a connection. And, you know, it, so I just, one, I appreciated that so much because this is Derek Jeter. I mean, this is, <laughs> This is Jeter that we're talking about, you know, and uh, just his his dedication to this organization. He is that guy that's the first one in, the last one to leave, um, and just wants, you know. I mean, you look at his career. The guy's a winner. He is he is a winner, and he he wants to win, and he wants to be competitive, and he pours. He doesn't ask anyone what he wouldn't do himself. Um, and he pours all of himself into into making the Marlins organization better. And so I'm sorry, Red Sox fans. <laughs> I, I'm sorry if it's hard to hear, but Mattingly and Jeter, both awesome. I love David Ortiz, if that makes you feel any better. And Dustin Pedroia is like, Dustin Pedroia was my favorite Red Sox player. Is that right? Uh, is that always. Really? Yeah, I loved Pedroia um, because, boy, you talk about a guy that goes 110% on every play. I mean, the ultimate definition, as cliche as it sounds, like when you think a guy that illustrates heart and hustle, like it's Dustin Pedroia. And I also loved that Pedroia wanted to spend his whole career with Boston you know, made that clear that that's where he wanted to be. And I just, in a day and age where you don't really see guys spend their whole career with one team anymore, I loved that that was where he knew he wanted to be. So I I, I, I will always go down as a, a, a huge Dustin Pedroia fan. Well, deservedly so. He, 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 we all, we all are really, it's, it's sad the way his career yeah. kind of ended a little bit, but yeah, yeah, he definitely to, to, to his share. Yeah, but he's great. No one worked harder. I loved his dynamic with Francona when Francona was the manager here. They would play yes. cribbage. Yes, I think absolutely. I think we played cribbage together and stuff and things like that. And um, I just I was hoping those two would be here forever. But what can you do? Yeah. My favorite player for a little while was Giancarlo Stanton, and it was at the time that he was in Miami. And I think did he leave after that year? Did he leave in 2018 to go to the Yankees? Or was it the year after that? It must have been 2018, right? Let's see. I believe it would have been 2018. Yeah, I think you're right. Because this upcoming season will be his third season with the Yankees, right? I think so, yeah. All, see, just like I said, all these years, yeah. all of the <laughs> – everything just runs together. I should, I should have told you to be math. I'm but sorry. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it, was, it was 2018. Yeah, because the Red Sox talked about – because Stanton came up in, dis, in discussions – and the word was, well, we don't need another outfielder. Where are we going to put him? And then we signed J.D. Martinez. Right. So it was like, but it worked out pretty well for both teams, I think. But um, I was a little, I was disappointed. Yeah, I wanted absolutely. to see him 
he couldn't get 27 because of Pudge Fisk, but he could have he could have had something else because he was 27 down in Miami, right? Yeah. He, yeah and I, I, I will say I have never ever seen a guy crush the baseball like Giancarlo Stanton. Uh, those were some of the hardest hit home runs. Some of the some of some of just the the most impressive home runs I've ever seen watching baseball were were uh, some of the balls that Giancarlo Stanton sent into orbit. Yeah, I think at the at the game I was at the no hitter, I think he scored a run. He got on base. I think I think he walked. He might have had a hit, but he definitely scored. What was the final two to nothing, or was it more than that? I, I, I forget. I remember it was a very, it was well, obviously low scoring with Edinson Volquez throwing yeah. the no hitter, but even the Marlins, I remember, yeah, it was either like a one nothing or a, or a two nothing final. I think two nothing might have been right. I think they might have scored one more run in like yeah. the eighth inning, like late in the game. Um, but yeah, yeah, and Stanton was one of the runs that scored, yes. if I remember correctly. Yeah, I, I think he was too. I remember. I looked at that. I didn't look at it today. Mm-hmm. I should have, but. Uh, I remember him being in there as, as having reached base and scored at least once. But I want right. to, I don't want to keep you too much longer. So I want to just finish with uh, something fun. Um, anyone who follows you know that your Instagram is all about your dogs, your family, beer, like you said. So take me through a, a, a what's your, in a, in a, cause the, well, actually the Clevelander, I forgot about this. I've been, the, I've been to the Clevelander in Miami and they have one in the stadium. Miami Park used to no they don't no longer the Cleveland uh no but they did have that for quite a while oh is that when they took out the other stuff too it's been four years since I've been there so I don't remember right right yeah and the the ballpark is uh obviously obviously undergone undergone some changes since then but yeah the Clevelander is no longer at Marlins Park but it was there when you were there yes now what's that like because I didn't get there I didn't I didn't know I didn't even know it was there until I showed up yeah, I I usually didn't really ever go out there during games. I went out there a couple of times, and I mean, it was always a party. Yeah. You know, there was a swimming pool in there. They had a bar in there. Um, it it was definitely it was definitely crazy. Um, so yeah, the Clevelander was where you went if you wanted to party <laughs> while you were at the ballpark. Right. Um, but uh but yeah it was it was definitely it was definitely crazy uh when it was there all right so what's your what's your beer of choice i love i i mean this is gonna sound dumb question you know <laughs> sam adams like i now you're just sucking like, up a little bit sam adams come on say right but right. I, right. I love sam adams uh, i've been to the brewery a couple different times oh. i've taken the party bus from sam adams to doyle's um Doyle's is but, not uh, more. Good. Doyle's is not more. They, they, Doyle's got closed. No! The one, the one, in, the one in JP, right? Oh, that's so sad. Is that, is that the one you're talking about, the one in JP? It's whatever one, like <laughs> after you went to the Sam Adams oh. Brewery, yeah. you could head over because Doyle's, I think, was the first pub that ever served Sam Adams. Or something like that. So, oh, that's so sad. Oh, that's terrible. Um, I meant to go on a high note. I'm sorry. Let's let's talk about something else. No, I know. Well, I will say, I will say, uh, one of my favorite things to do whenever I come to Boston is to go over to the Green Dragon um, because they have a special Sam Adams that's only made for them that you can get at the Green Dragon. So I love to always stop in and get um, get a pint of that. Uh, I mean, I love the the cherry wheat. I love the the whipped beer. Um, Sam Adams Winter is awesome. Um, yeah, so I I mean, if I'm if I'm gonna go beer, I like I'll totally admit I'm I'm a craft beer fan, and I like the wheat beers, and especially the you know the the fruity wheat beers. I mean, I'm a girl. <laughs> What can I say? That's, okay. That's my excuse. Um, <laughs> but but I mean, like if, if there's if there are multiple beers on tap, I will usually either go for a local beer just because I like trying, you know, local beers. Or if there's Sam Adams, I'll go for a Sam. 
All right, now you said if you're going for beer, which I told implies, you, Boston. I'm telling yeah, you, Boston runs in my blood. I can't help it. You're, you're definitely holding up on that. I, I, I don't for a second <laughs> think you're, you're lying about that. That's great. Um, what, what is there any other places you go around here when you come? How you don't like you don't get up here that often. So what do you? Um, I get up to Boston usually about once once a year if I'm lucky. Uh, just you know, partially because of work. You know, we play the AL East every couple of years. And then if I, if I get a chance to go up there with hockey, whenever we play the Bruins, um, I don't always get to travel with hockey. So it might be another reporter that goes on that trip, but I, I always try and get to Boston at least once a year. And I mean, of course, some of my favorite things to do, um, you know, I love, I love going to uh, Bell and Hand, Green Dragon, Union Oyster House, that little trio of bars that's right there. I love um, going to the JFK Museum, which I think is over at UMass Amherst. Uh, of course, there's the history connection. One of my friends always told me such a cool thing to do, and I try and do it every time I go up there. Go to the Beantown Pub, which is right across the street from where Sam Adams is buried, and order a Sam Adams so that you can drink Sam Adams while staring at the grave of Sam Adams. Um, <laughs> Why wouldn't you? So, I, I mean, I've got this. I've got this whole checklist of, <laughs> of things that are probably super cliche, hey, that's all right. but I, you know, it's just things that are just always really fun to do when I make it up there. You might have to add a day every time you go from now on, make it two days here instead of just one. So you can do the cliches. I know, I know, out. I know. So what, I know. Cause what? I've been to uh, harp. Is that one of the other breweries the harp, up there? Yep, harp. Right, by, right across from the bottom. Yeah, the, yep. harp. Um, the aquarium is amazing. I mean, Fenway to me is magical. I, I love Fenway. It's one of my favorite ballparks in the country. So of course, anytime I can get up there and either work a game or go to a game at Fenway, I love it. Um, you know, Quincy Market, because you can get anything and then you can walk right out to the water. I, it's just a great city. I mean, it really is. Like, it's just a, just an awesome city. Yeah. Now down, down in Florida, I've been to, well, are, you, are you up near, you're not up near Tampa, are you? Or? You're not. No, Tampa's on the other side of the state. Yeah, no, but I meant you personally. You said you're. I'm not trying to find out where you live, but do you do you live on the East Coast as well? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay, do. Okay. I, I'm in Fort Lauderdale. I'm in oh, Fort okay. Lauderdale because so. I've been to Ebor City, which is kind of okay. like which our Faneuil Hall. Great. Yeah, I, what I like about Ebor City is that they put barricades. Like you can't drive through it on the weekend. <laughs> At least right. that was when I was there. I went to a Patriots right. game in Tampa, one of the a long time ago. And they, everyone said, go to Ebor City. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn first that it's spelled with a Y, Ebor City. It's, it's yes. Y-B-O-R. Y Y-B-O-R. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, but they blocked off. So you weren't concerned about anybody driving through or, because Faneuil Hall, it's right near, you know, you you know what that is. That's the Quincy Market. That's Faneuil Hall. Yes. And yes. it's right by the, there's a highway there. There's all kinds right. of traffic, people driving through. It's a. <laughs> well, and that's one thing that's, so cool about Boston though, is that you've got this building that's hundreds and hundreds of years old, juxtaposed to a building that's been built within the last 50 to a hundred years. So it's just this cool reminder of the history of our country and, and, and so much of the history that took place in Boston, you know, like I've gone and I've seen the USS constitution and of course walked, you know, the freedom trail. And it's just, I could go on and on. I could go on and on about all the reasons that I love. Boston. There's a ton of reasons. But, to love I mean, Boston. obviously you can tell the love is genuine for that. Yes. City. Yes. You're not, you didn't just study today to, for this, podcast i know that you definitely are yeah are, are genuine <laughs> uh it, i do want to would can you tell everyone your because you you guys should follow her she's a great follow on instagram what is it no, just you. it's just blaylock right just just so on not twitter yeah, on twitter tell, tell all, it's at all. jess blaylock and on instagram it's at jess l blaylock b-l-a-y-l-o-c-k okay. so i think that's the only difference Okay, well, you definitely should. She's she's fun, and you get to see all kinds of beer. And she's on boats. She's I saw one picture, um, and I, I'm a big fan of the Tervis tumblers. And I noticed you had a Tervis tumbler yes. in your hand on one of the boats. And now it really sounds like I'm stalking you, but I'm really not. I promise you. 
Um, but but no, you, I, 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 you did that. There's all kinds of videos with you doing the dance and I saw the hell, everything. It's all, it's yeah. all good. You're, you're, you're a fun follow. So I hope that you you see your numbers increase. And I do want to thank oh, you well, for thank everything. You. Is there anything else you want to promote or anything? Are you just the, the Florida season? Yeah, just, uh, you know, glad that hockey's back anxiously awaiting, uh, the start of baseball next season. And, um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's uh if there are any shows that are coming up. I mean, I guess it would be hard to promote any show because anyone who's watching in Boston probably isn't going to be able to get them, but But I do have um, a lot of I, I have a lot of people can, from here. If you got any show center ice and you can tune into a Panthers game on occasion, then how about that? Tune into a Panthers game on Fox Sports Florida. There are a lot of people that lived here that are now in Florida though. So they'll that they could true. go. So this, but that's nothing. a good point. And yeah, the, the so the bb and Center actually is one of only three teams in the league who are allowing fans at games. Uh, they have a 25% capacity. So they've done a tremendous job spacing tickets out so that people are socially distant. And um, they were one of the first arenas to get the uh, seal of approval for safety rating and cleanliness. Um, so yeah, if anybody does want to take a little trip and, and go see a hockey game this season, uh, the weather is spectacular right now. I think it was 76 and sunny today. And, uh, and we've got, we've got hockey for people to see here in, here in South Florida. So make a little vacation out of it and, and come and see the Panthers play at the bb &T center. Nice. Thank you so much, Jessica. I appreciate all your time. All right. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank you.